in scented form, a traveler of the fragrant space-time. After my mind trip to the different gardens of this universe, I have brought to you five perfumes that encapsulate the essence of garden exoticism. The meaning of exoticism I am presently researching is that of the unusualness and the excitement that arrives from the fact that someone or something comes from a far away and unknown land, also many times from a tropical land. From all the flowers, the fruits and grasses I have collected, these are the five I have distinguished. Enter the gardens of my mind and enjoy. We begin with sacred gardens full of lotuses. The lotus flower is otherwise known as sacred lotus because it symbolizes purity, enlightenment and self-regeneration. Lotus flowers are native to central and northern India through autumn of China, but can also be found today in all Southeast Asia, in New Guinea and Australia. So the perfume that captures the essence of sacred lotus gardens is Adventurous by Estee Lauder. This discontinued gem, this perfume is refined while at the same time has a bold character. It offers to the wearer a medley of green and woody aspects, and also at the same time an exotic floral aura. It is ethereal and effervescent, and it feels like opening paths to gardens of lotuses and watery greens. This perf has also vetiver, which uh, can be very distinct in the background. And um, this uh, note manages to balance the sublime qualities of this perfume and ground it. So it somehow brings you in touch with the earth. It is light and starts with a very elusive citrus feel, but very soon on the skin, it achieves um, an express and bold character. So if you seek for a perfume that combines two contradictory qualities, lightness and at the same time an adventurous spirit, then this perfume is the one for you. And it captures in a very, very beautiful way the ethereal quality of a lotus flower. Adventurous by Estee Lauder. I invite you now to a garden full of lilac flowers. The lilac flower is native to Eastern Europe and Asia. It is an integral part of the story of God Pan, who was the god of forests and fields. He was in love with a nymph called Syringa, and it is said that while he was chasing her in the forest, she turned herself into a lilac shrub in order to flee, but he managed to find the lilac shrub and took a part of it to create the first panpipe. Thus, the scientific name of lilacs is Syringa. Their scent is deeply and richly floral and is reminiscent of roses and vanilla. Every spring, their scent fills the air and tells me that winter is over, so it's a scent that brings me good news. The perfume that captures the essence of lilac flowers in the most elegant and delicate way is no other than Lilac Path by Irene. The first thing I get with this fragrance is, of course, the beautiful lilac flower quality and I mean the purple lilacs because there are also white lilacs but in this case uh, I'm describing purple lilac flowers beautiful flowers of all sorts accompany this uh, lilac aroma offering their special qualities to this scent like the bitter green aroma of galbanum, the nectary sweet aura of the honeysuckle, and also the, the bitter sweet and musky scent of the angelica flower. Imagine 
this garden with a ceiling of lilac flowers above you and you walking underneath. There is no one there. It's just you yourself in the garden. There is no one waiting for you, no one stressing you. Um, you have nowhere to go. So you are there living in the moment and absorbing, taking a deep breath, the lilac flowers and the pulsing greens. It's a moment of spirituality and it is all yours. So this is the ecstasy that this perfume offers me every time I smell it. I get a six hour longevity with this scent and some fine compliments by people who tend to acknowledge more elegant textures and constitutions. So this is Lilac Path by Ari. I invite you now in the rubber rhubarb greenhouse. Rhubarb or rubber I hope that's the correct pronunciation, is a plant that is native to Central Asia and is known for its medicinal qualities. It was discovered by Marco Polo during his travels in China in 1271. Its scent is fresh and fruity sweet with some sour and red berry facets. As another Marco Polo, I have brought to you Eau de Rubarbe Écarlate by Hermès. The perfect combination of sweet, green and fruity. The first impression is that of a very bright, tart and embellished scent with sour and sweet facets. It reminds me of a thicker, fuller and sweeter grapefruit scent. It has this citrus sparkle and at the same time some beautiful green nuances which balance the sweetness and the fruity qualities. When I get a whiff of this scent, I imagine an open peacock tail with all its colors, very imposing, uh, very grand and majestic. This is a very, very bright juice and it's perfect for spring and summer. It can be used, I think, throughout day and night. The longevity of this one is five hours on my skin, but the projection is outstanding. You will get some juicy, satisfying compliments if you wear this one in warm weather. I invite you now to the Mango Gardens of India. Mango is a tropical stone fruit native to South Asia and has a distinct creamy peach scent along with some piney facets. If you want to enter the magical mango gardens of my mind, I introduce you to Crystal Sur number no. two by Sergeov of the collection Shooting Stars. This milky tropical delight. With the first whiff, I get the sweet and somehow green fleshy aroma of a ripe mango. The scent is chunky and plethoric and it feels like a freshly cut mango ready to be consumed. So it is the perfume I'm going to wear today. The scent begins with the most photorealistic mango scent and stays like this for a long time. The addition of the milk levels this perfume up and makes it one of the most delightful tropical perfumes I have come across. The mango is the king of all the fruits, but then following arrive the succulent guava and the shiny pineapple, which uh, conclude this tropical euphoria. Of course, the quality of search of is unsurpassed, a uh, beautiful longevity and uh, projection. So if you want a high end quality tropical perfume to embrace you with its creamy and uh, milky aroma, look no further and get Cruz de Sur number no. two from the Shooting Star collections of Sergio.
So we move now to the Mediterranean and to a beautiful garden by the coast with magnolia trees and lemon orchards via the beautiful and the dazzling Un Jardin sur la Lagune by Hermès. This delicate, salty lemon breeze in the summer. At first spray, I get a very elegant and delicate lemony facet but I have to distinguish here lemony from citrusy because this lemon is not at all sharp or fizzy. It is a white floral infused um, delicate lemon because it arrives from the lemon nuanced petals of the magnolia and not from a lemon itself as a note. There is also a beautiful salty breeze that feels like it has captured the essence of the magnolia uh, flowers. As time soothes the edges and warms uh, the perfume on your skin, the aromatic woody base gives to this perfume another dimension. Through its whole wear, there is a scent you get in the surface and another one you get from somewhere deeper. It's a multi-dimensional scent with an outstanding longevity. I get almost 18 to 20 hours constantly. The name makes me dream of uh, light blue waters and Mediterranean flowers, gardens by the coast, but not as I have seen them or even smelled them, but as I have imagined them as a child. I really love this scent and I always wear it in the summer. Our garden journey comes to an end, but please bear in mind that this was only a small part of the various aromatic garden heavens of this world. There is a lot more to explore perfume wise. I hope to see you in my next video and until then I send you the most fragrant hug scented by all the beautiful gardens we have just explored. Adieu.